Yeah, drilling holes. That started its life a number of years back when uh, a man came along to put a hot water tank in the racket club. I was down in the studio one day and Stuart Every walked in the room and he said, a man came to drill holes in the afternoon. And I said, I suppose by the evening most of the afternoon had gone then at it. And he looked straight back as if he said, what's he on about now, you know? Uh, and it just sat with me, I wrote it down. At the, at the, at the, the idea of the afternoon disappearing one hole at a time it was a very Beatlesque, uh, yellow submarine-esque kind of, 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 of image. Um, and that sat with me for a while and then I started to think, you know, I seem to have slept through the morning by the afternoon and the morning is yet to come. Uh, and so I started this kind of intellectual thing then of, of trying to create a word structure which was like no other poem I'd ever written, where it wasn't about rhymes, so much. it was about rhymes, but it was also about words that sounded the same. Uh, a woman arrived in a panic with a picnic, a man came to pick holes in the logic he wore, plastic. Um, and then with the rhymes on the end, you know, better to give than receive. Shoes you would hardly believe. The evening arrived slightly early, like a pygmy, chewing the wrong kind of leaves, but then pygmy was relating back to the pea in plastic. Um, so it was like no kind of poem I'd ever written. Um, and got this, la 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 la. <laughs> Which is quite Lennony. It's the kind of thing Lennon might have written, you know, the, the, the sort of violence and the, the coarseness of the melody and the insistence of it. Um, and I thought it'd be great if, if we had this thing that was quite insistent and then just chilled out into a lot of birds singing and sunshine and it was just one of those days you know so it became a dream in the choruses and so it, it works all it's all the wrong way around the, the the verses are actually quite powerful and insistent and the choruses are very laid back um, so it's it's dropping away to what to the chorus rather than the opposite way around so everything about drilling holes is, is totally radical um, the subject matter is is totally psychedelic. It's Sid, Sid Barrett-esque. It's a distant cousin of Sea Emily play. It's a distant cousin of Strawberry Fields all at the same time. Um, and we wanted to make it quite chilled out, but Megan thought it should be more punky. He wanted it. He wanted it loud and live. In fact, he didn't see it at all. We, we were all banging on about it for months and he kept burying it. I knew that it had something, so in the end I took it home and, and made a demo of it uh, at home and brought it back. And the demo sounded much more like T-Rex. Uh, very, very kind of 70s pop. And that, that turned Dave around. He, liked, he thought the demo was cool, but he wanted it to be heavier and more live. So then we ended up, you know, doing something which was playing something that's very live in the studio and there's not hardly anything in the way of overdubs on there. It all just went down at once in the room. It's kind of wall of madness. Everybody trying to be as loopy as they could um, in, that, in that take. Um, but quite a lot of what I did at home of the demo survived all the way through, uh, including the lead vocals, which were actually done in my kitchen. So I sang, sang, sang that vocal in the kitchen, screaming my head off one day when everybody was out. Any passers-by in the village would have wondered what the hell was going on in there. <laughs>